live and we live Mwah. Ah, 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 ah. welcome ah. ghoul monsters and ghouls of all ages to a brand new episode of the chapters podcast i understand that this is february but trust me this theming is appropriate for this week's episode of course i am your host creator of monsters and machinations and podcasts and videos of all various types jay and joining us as always are my lovely assistants brian and tony only one of them has a hunchback i will let you decide which one it is how are you doing tonight fellas yes master <laughs> hey guys uh kept that bit going on long <laughs> Anyway, yeah, if you listen to the last episode, this might not make any sense right now, but it'll make sense in a bit. How are you guys doing out there? Yep, yep, yep. And to be fair, we were originally going to do this in October, which would have been a lot more pro or no it was supposed to be valentine's day which would have still been a little weird but slightly more appropriate but life got in the way which yet again life got in the way here yeah well, this time it wasn't really life it was we actually watched what we said that we were gonna review and we were like oh yeah yeah we were like nope it's good but it's very it's very like, mind intense. it's very intense it's very mind fucky it's it's like, wait, wait. I don't know if we'd be able to process this fully, like, in just a week or so. Like, just after yeah, one watch. Yeah, regret that we didn't watch it week to week. Yeah, yeah. Right. You live and you learn, though. Oh, well. But we will continue to watch it someday. Yep. But for now, we were like, we need a backup. And this was just the thing in question today was added to Peacock. Yep. Very recently, as of course. And I will tell you, this is another one of those cases of, I mean, you know, we've talked about it several times. And, you know, honestly, mm -hmm. it should just be a general rule of thumb. Don't trust the critics. Yeah, especially with, like, popcorn flicks. Yeah. Which this definitely is. Yep. Yeah, because the critics gave this, like, middling reviews, but we really enjoyed this movie. Now, what movie in question are we talking about uh, this week? We are talking about Lisa Frankenstein, the uh, offbeat horror comedy, which serves as the directorial debut of one Zelda Williams. That's right, the daughter of legendary actor Robin Williams. So, yeah, very excited to talk about yeah. it. And uh, with a script written by Diablo Cody. Yep, the... Uh, the person behind the script of such cult classic horror films as Jennifer's Body. And also just classics like Juno. Yeah, Juno is also classic as well. Yeah, most yeah, most of the stuff she's written is, is uh, I would classify as offbeat in one way or another. Oh yeah, indeed. A lot of people, you know, it took until like within the last 10 years for people to realize that Jennifer's Body is actually like a really, a really good like, so, uh, like low-key but high-key gay romance oh yeah because like what watching it as like watching it as an adult who is more aware of like you know gayness and whatnot you can totally tell that uh the blonde friend in the glasses is super gay for jennifer yeah so like yeah a, lo a lot a lot of cool stuff is in there uh and very much like in a lot of her movies uh uh the movies that she's written the script for like there are a lot of subversions to classic tropes but you know it's not like full-on ryan johnson it's just like oh i wasn't expecting that usually this character is that uh you know acts this type of way yeah like uh one that i have yet to see is uh what you call it um young adult uh, -huh. uh it was one starring charlie Theron. oh it was like i don't know if you'd call it a coming of age or not but it was kind of like coming of age as story but it starred a woman uh freshly divorced rediscovering herself oh so kind of like eat play uh eat pray love ish but like she's a complete disaster and with the dialogue of Diablo. Nice. Cody. Nice, nice, nice. Uh, Patrick Wilson and uh, Patton Oswald also play big parts in the movie. Oh, cool. Uh, but anyway, yeah, so, so, topic. so that'll be the movie that we're talking about, uh, Lisa Frankenstein. Uh, if, you, uh, if you've been around the podcast for a while, you should know we reacted to the trailer and we were like, oh yeah, we gotta watch this. This is added to the mm -hmm. this is added to the queue. And even though it got booted from the queue, it came right back. So, goes to show. If we really Really do like a trailer we will find a way to cover it mm -hmm. so uh yeah before we get started with uh that stuff though of course we can't kick off an episode without first jumping right into the news with brian all right so um first of all gotta start off with an in, in memoriam 
Emporium for a tenth Perdomo star of the chilling adventures of Sabrina and Gen V. Yeah, that was one that I like I found out pretty early because I was just scrolling through Twitter and I saw that Gen V was trending. So I click it because I was like, yeah. oh, there might be some news about Gen V. And then it's all, like all the posts are like, you know, rest in peace, including an official statement from the uh, the Gen V staff, like showing their condolences and sadness towards the death. And I was like, oh, he died. Holy shit. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yep. I believe um, it was a motorcycle accident. Yep. Mm -hmm. At 27. Wow, yep. it's crazy how how that fucking age and Hollywood wild. Oh, you're right. He's, Holy crap. Yeah, he's in good company though. Amy Winehouse, oh, yeah. Jimi Hendrix. Was Kurt Cobain twenty uh, seven? I think so. Yep. But uh, anyway, he he will be missed. And uh, just as a head, because uh, he was a great addition to that show, little young Magneto. Yep. But also, uh, just as a heads up out there, this isn't the main news story, but uh, it's a side note thing. Uh, uh, obviously, Gen V, which was currently filming, is being put on pause. Yeah. To try to figure out. Well, first they mourn their friend. Well, of course, that's and the then, most important part. Yeah, and then they try to figure out a way around. Now, it, but now I I, I want to take a second to kind of speculate a little bit. So do you do you think since it was mid filming that they're gonna recast or they're gonna do the Black Panther thing and just completely rewrite or maybe write around it? Because I mean, part of part of the sub. One of the subplots in Gen V uh, with the dad and him was that his powers were slowly killing him. Yeah, so maybe. Depends on what they have filmed with him already. Yep. Because uh, I believe they said uh, when uh, when Lance Reddit passed away tragically, Yep. Uh, they were filming Ballerina, the John Wick spinoff, mm. and uh, they managed to cobble enough footage to just like continue as normal. Ah. So uh, time will tell, but uh, condolences go out to his friends and family. For sure. All right, um, now let's transition to some uh, fake messy news. Uh, a remake was announced recently that I'm actually excited for. Okay. Uh, do y'all remember the uh, 1989 movie War of the Roses? No. It starred Michael Douglas and Kathleen Turner, oh. Danny DeVito, and a very young 17-year-old uh, Sean Astin was also in it. Oh, that's cool. It, it was a uh, kind of a bit of a rom-com, but not your typical rom-com because it, it's about a married couple who tries everything to drive each other out of the house in a vicious divorce battle. Okay. Well, uh, they are remaking it and uh, the director involved is the uh, dude who did uh, all of the Austin Powers and the Meet the Parents movies. Oh, nice. But you'll never believe he's playing the married couple. Okay. Benedict Cumberbatch and Olivia Coleman. Oh! Huh. Acting powerhouses. Interesting combination, too. Well, they're both British, and they're both technically MCU actors. Wait, who does Olivia Coleman play in the MCU? Uh, she's a key player in Secret Invasion. Oh, I didn't see that. Okay. Yeah. Um, her character is, uh, the daughter of the British Helen Commandos guy. Ah, uh, okay. But, uh, anyway, so that movie's coming up. I'm excited. Two Oscar-winning powerhouse actors going back and forth in a very messy divorce that could be for that yeah that could be pretty interesting to watch yeah but that's the news for today all right so uh now we get to transition into screen time for those of you folks who are new to the podcast screen time is the uh the part of the podcast where the boys and i each discuss the different pieces of media that we've consumed in between podcast episodes that could range between tv shows that we have don't have time to cover movies we don't have time to cover uh, video games, YouTube videos, uh, music, various other things. Uh, so I'll start us off. For me, there isn't much. Uh, so uh, as of uh, as of last week, uh, from the recording of this podcast episode, uh, since we're since we're like behind backlog, this will be like way after the fact. But as of last week, as of recording this episode, your boy has officially turned 30. And to celebrate my birthday this past weekend, I went to go see a movie with the fam. And uh, there's a funny story behind this one <laughs> because like. Uh, Initially, I wanted to see Godzilla and Kong because you know I really liked the uh, like the the uh, the previous movie in it, and I, I wanted to continue, of course. So 
So we go, we go to the theater to see the movie, and like we're waiting, we're waiting. Then the dude behind the projector, uh, like you know, goes down, comes into the theater, and he's like, "Okay, guys, so we're having trouble loading in uh, the Godzilla Kong movie, but I can get it to work and load in, load in a movie. Uh, but it won't be Godzilla, uh, won't be Godzilla Kong. It will be uh, the new Ghostbusters movie, Afterlife 2. Uh, <laughs> so you know, Frozen, Frozen. It's 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 like yeah it's frozen something frozen something uh but uh so we already had our food and i was so and and the guy said that he was gonna give everybody in the theater free passes anyway so i was like you know what i'll watch it i haven't seen the first one but i'll watch it uh and i and i enjoyed it it was okay like i didn't hate it uh it it gave me it gave me very much uh force awakens vibe there were a couple there were a couple of plot points that i like questioned uh just uh between certain characters but overall it was fun uh it had a it had a nice mix of the new cast and the uh, and the og ghostbusters i enjoyed it uh, other uh it's called frozen empire frozen empire okay cool 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 oh also camille nanjiani is fucking hilarious in that movie he always is like okay so giving away a uh, sort of plot point for this so he's the one who sells uh ray the artifact MacGuffin that is like sealing away the bad guy uh because apparently like his family are supposed to be like the guardians of said MacGuffin, and they have mm-hmm. a they have a special power to that allows them to like keep the evil ghost at bay which is basically <laughs> firebending <laughs> and so uh when, uh, when they discover this after doing research on the MacGuffin after the ghost breaks out like they have to Camille Nanciani has to learn how to uh firebend so he's carrying around a lighter practicing how to like move around fire and shit and one of the funniest parts right is like you know he he's talking mad shit to the big bad ghost and then he fl- he, he, he keeps repeatedly flicking the the lighter he goes ah, eh, eh. And then Finn Wolfhard is like, wait, did you use all the lighter fluid? Shut up, you kept telling me to practice. Please don't hurt me. (laughs) Oh, it was great. Yeah, Uh, I I enjoyed it, though. It was fun. And I really like the remix they did to the theme. Uh, But other than that, uh, continuing the Persona journey, I have officially started Persona 5 Royal. A lot of fun so far. Uh, Stylistically and vibe-wise, this is probably my favorite. It just oozes personality. Like, you know, Brian Brian was with me when I started the game off, and we were both like, holy shit, this looks cool. Mm -hmm. Very cinematic, too. Oh, yeah, for sure. Uh, Not very far in right now. I'll keep you guys updated on my journey when I finish the game itself. But uh, it's a lot of fun. Uh, I've also been... Like just continuing to go down the uh, Persona content rabbit hole. Uh, David introduced me to uh, some videos by a uh, creator named, I believe, Feather, and uh, he he does Feather. Feather. Okay, thank you, Tony. Uh, but yeah, so these videos are like these like versus battles, but not like your traditional versus battles. It's like how would X character deal with uh, this particular Persona cast or Persona character? And uh, one of the funnier ones was so for context mostly for Brian and for you folks at home who maybe haven't uh, dealt with Persona. So in Persona 3, uh, as you saw a little bit, you're mostly dungeon crawling through this like elaborate like labyrinth, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, the video I watched was what if the the team for Persona 3 uh, had to go up against Kevin McAllister, who was in control of uh, Tartarus. (laughs) So, you know, you got Kevin like throwing out his elaborate home alone traps how to seize deal with all that it's, it's pretty it was pretty funny uh i also watched one where it was uh the morio gang from jojo's part four uh versus adachi and then also the reverse of that the investigation team uh versus kira that was fun as well uh but yeah that was pretty much it for me uh so tony what bits and pieces of media have you consumed in between podcast episodes mm. I just go back to my usual rabbit hole shenanigans. Nothing new, really. Crusader Other Kings than... 3 and stuff? Mm, no, nothing really updated on that front. Ah. Nothing just caught my eye, honestly. Okay. Just some usual stuff. Okay. Just... We didn't even do that much of Homie Hang. But we... Yeah, that is true. No problem. Okay, moving on then. Brian, what about you? All right, I got... <laughs> 
I got like three things that I want to bring up. One is um, I'm continu continuing this accidental trend of uh, watching action movies that I never watched. Okay. From the last few years. And uh, first of all, Nobody, the uh, Bob Odenkirk action movie. Yep. It, it was really good. It was very brutal. Nice. It's uh, done by the same director as uh, that first person movie, Hardcore Henry. Man, that shit made me dizzy. But the action was great. And you can really tell here because it's kind of like, I know this is a weird comparison, but it's kind of like Jackie Chan, wherein it's brutal and your lead can and will get hurt. Ah. Like, he's definitely retired, and so it um takes him a while to get, like, get back a into the back. swing of things. He, yep. And he, like, gets thrown out of a window. He gets stabbed. He, Bob Odenkirk, goes through the ringer in this, mm -hmm. and uh, he's actually really good with the action. Action, and I want to see more action from him. Well, uh, good to know you can call on Saul for some action. Yeah. Um, Connie Nielsen, Hippolyta, she uh, plays his wife. Cool. Who I don't think knew about his previous life, though they do keep it a little bit vague. Mm -hmm. But a uh, person that knew about his previous life, his father, Christopher Lloyd. Oh, cool. And uh, without spoiling too much, Christopher Lloyd does get in on the action a bit. Sweet. Uh, Michael I Ironside also plays a small role, but uh, as his old retired buddy that he still keeps in contact with with a ham radio, who definitely won't show up in the third act, <laughs> is none other than Riza. Oh, shit. Yup. That's and cool. he's badass. It's... Also, I like the fact that uh, this is a minor spoiler, but it's not um, It's not his old life coming back to haunt him. It's uh, he fucks up and fucks up the wrong person, so their family member gets involved. Ah. Uh. Type situation. Gotcha. So it also does do a little bit of that, like, midlife crisis e vibe. I mean, it makes sense for, uh, like, you know, a uh, person of Bob Odenkirk's age. It fits right around there. Yeah. But, uh, other movie that I watched, which was also action, was uh, Bullet Train. Oh, yeah, I, I actually saw that, like, a, f a few months ago. Very good action action comedy. Oh, yeah. Um, really well paced, too. It Time flew by. Yeah, it's, uh, done by the same director that, uh, that, uh, did, uh, Deadpool 2. Yeah, people forget how funny Brad Pitt is. Yeah, uh, I will forever remember him as uh, the, the guy who hated Rachel Green on uh, Friends. Oh, yeah. Because she was his bully. Yep. But this guy also, the director also did uh, Atomic Blonde. Yeah, Atom and Atomic great. Blonde has great action in it as well. Yeah, he also did uh, that, uh, if you ever saw that Super Bowl commercial from 2019, the one where it was the super intense snowball fight. Yeah, so uh, he directed I'm I'm trying to make sure I, I'm not confusing it because I think they both came around the same time. Was was Atomic Blonde the one with Charlize uh Charlize the yeah uh, Charlize Theron? Damn it, say say her name yes, correctly. Where it was during the Cold War. Yep, yep, yep. Because the the, the other one with Scarlett Johansson also came out around the same time. <laughs> Oh, yeah. But no, this one is Charlie Theron. He also directed Hobbs and Shaw. Oh, cool. And the film that we're all looking forward to that was previously on a trailer talk, The Fall Guy. Oh, yeah, the one, the, the one with Ryan Reynolds and the, uh, the stuntman. Not Ryan Reynolds. Ryan Gosling. Ryan Gosling. It was a different Ryan. Yeah, you got the wrong Ryan. But I can see why the director. But, yeah. But yeah, star-studded cast. Oh, yeah. I can see now why people raved about Lemon and Tangerine. Mm-hmm. They were great, and their chemistry was gay, great. <laughs> but, I mean, uh, Loki kind of gay, too. Yeah, but I saw it more as brothers. Yeah. But then uh, Joey King, surprising me, kind of a little bit of a psycho. Oh, more than a little bit. And uh, all the guest stars. Oh, yeah. It was shit. That, that train was packed with people. Logan Lerman, the hero from uh, Heroes. Yep. Uh, what the heck? Karen Fukuhara was in it? Really? Katana from Suicide Squad? She was the concessions girl. Oh, wow. But uh, back Bad Bunny, definitely a good like ensemble cast. Yep. Which, uh, by the way, uh, a little cool tie-in. Uh, the Elder. Do you know who that is? No. Hiroyuki Sanada, aka Yoshi Toranaga from Shogun. Oh shit! Yeah. Cool. Nice. Yep. He was also Scorpion in uh, the newest Mortal Kombat. Huh. And he's in uh, John Wick Four. That was a good surprise. I was not expecting to see him. Yeah. I didn't even. Well, I guess I wouldn't have known because we hadn't watched Sh Shogun. Did come out until 
recently, but that's cool. Also, a uh, little bit of side note for especially you there, Tony. Um, mm. You get to see his character in a flashback, and you know who plays him in the flashback? Ew. Yoshi Tsudarso. Oh, shit! That's cool. Nice. And uh, for the audience out there who don't recognize the name, Coda from Power Rangers Dino Charge. Yep, Dino Charge Blue. Who's that? He was oh, also uh, here. live Hello. action Nightwing in... Uh, oh, yeah, in, ba- the... in Wayne Family Adventure <laughs> live action. Yeah. But yeah, I saw that. And then also, um, solid film. Really see the uh, Tarantino and John Woo influences. It definitely feels very Tarantino, especially with the pacing. It has, like, those those Pulp Fiction cuts where you mm-hmm. have to, like, puzzle together the actual timeline. And one that really shocked me and blew me away, which uh, I will just say, the water bottle. Yep. But lastly, uh, just shout out to uh, Curtis Connors. Uh, saw his latest video, which was an hour long. Um, he's a commentary guy on YouTube. He was on Vine. Uh, he's good friends with Drew Gooden and uh, Danny Gonzalez. Ah. Uh-huh. If you ever saw in, in those videos, the, the guy with curly hair. Oh, okay. But he does his own commentary type stuff, and uh, this time he, he veered outside of his normal stuff and, like, did a thing where uh, he tested old technology that was considered revolutionary at the time, like uh, the handheld TV, which oh. was, like, that big box that was, like, as big as, like, an old-school Game Boy yeah, yeah. that runs only on antenna, and then also uh, the AT&T, the AT&T uh, video phone, which was this phone where uh, there was a little screen that was like one by two inches Jeez. where you could video call someone on like an actual analog phone. But he goes through all these different like old school technologies and tries his hardest to make them work, some more than others. But it's a cool video. Look at yesteryear gone by with a comedic uh, undertone because he's a comedian at heart. Like, he even does stand-up. Oh, cool. And, like, does tours. But anyway, that's it for me. All right. Well, with screen time done, it is time for us to transition to Trailer Talk. Trailer Talk is the segment of the podcast where our boy Brian here has gathered together six, count them, six brand new trailers at the time of the recording of this podcast. And uh, we, through the magic of editing, we'll be back shortly and give you guys our rapid-fire thoughts on Zed trailers. So until then, please enjoy this word from our non-existent sponsor. And we're back. Okay. Great set of trailers, Brian. Um, looking forward to talking about all of these. So, uh, first I want to talk about is uh, Bad Boys Ride or Die. I'm excited for this. I actually really enjoyed Bad Boys for Life. So, I'm, I'm curious to see how this goes down. And it's an interesting reverse, right? Like, or it's a, it's, a, it's a break from the usual kind of, like, cop trope. This time, they're not clearing their own names. They're clearing the name of their captain, who's, like, supported them all throughout the franchise. Mm-hmm. Mr. Wusa himself. Yep. And, uh, believe it or not, Bad Boys for Life mm-hmm. was, uh, number three. Really? I thought it was four because four life. Oh, okay. I don't know. Missed opportunity. Yeah, but the trailer looks good. Uh, the only thing is, uh, kind of sad that it looks like they're abandoning the new Yeah! I, w- I was wondering about that. I was like, where are the new kids? I thought that, I thought the new kids did great. Especially, uh, like, Reggie and Vanessa Hudgens. Mm-hmm. Well, we don't know if the new kids are being abandoned. They could be in there, but just not in this trailer. Oh. Oh, yeah, indeed. Because their boss was in the trailer. But you know who was in the trailer? Will Smith, the illegitimate son? Yep. Yeah. I mean, it was pretty obvious that he was coming back with how they set him up uh, at the end of well, uh, yeah. Bad Boys for Life. So I'm excited. Can't wait to see that, how that plays out. Yeah, I uh, still need to see Bad Boys for Life. It's worth a watch. Solid film. And they do a good job at balancing, uh, like in a similar vein to Top Gun, they do a very good job at balancing out the uh, the OG cast and the uh, the new kids. Nice. Only thing is, is that the only way to watch it is uh, renting stars. it. Oh, gotcha. Well, well, or renting it. Yep. Yeah, but uh, all right. So uh, also uh, speaking of stuff, uh, I decided to bite the bullet and uh, go ahead and get AMC Plus, and I'm glad I did because uh, this new show, Parish, looks fucking awesome. Giancarlo Esposito. This time he's playing an anti-hero, which I guess is technically not a bad guy. It's kind of in the same. Uh, like area, it's in the same area as like Kaleidoscope because mm-hmm. he looks to be playing like a hitman type character, a former villain who 
retired. Yep, yep, yep. This one, I think I'm out. They pull me, me back, back in. in. Yep. It looks pretty cool. I like the vibe. His car looks dope. Definitely interested. Uh, he's clearly got a family, so they're gonna, you know, pull the family man angle here. Yep. Also, uh, he's a driver. Yep. So that'll be cool to see yep give me like baby driver vibes almost with like the stunt driving that we did get to see in there so this yeah. this will definitely be added to the queue uh if not full-on podcast coverage it'll definitely be something we talk about with screen time homie hang stuff so look forward to that another show we'll definitely be covering is franklin yeah that looks sick um i've all i've all uh benjamin franklin has always been my favorite founding father just because of all like the crazy shenaniganery that he got up to in his life and the fact that this show focuses on quite possibly the most interesting part of his life where he served as the ambassador to france during the revolution uh it's yeah. definitely gonna be interesting and michael douglas is the perfect casting for benjamin franklin mm -hmm. like oh yeah indeed michael douglas would have been perfect and so and uh uh, you know, after seeing Monarch, I think Kurt Russell would have been perfect because mm -hmm. like him, him playing a uh, homie over on Monarch, he gives me that same kind of vibe. Oh, yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, it, it looks dope. I'm excited. And I, I always like period piece type shows. Indeed. When they're done right, they're really good. Uh, I'm trying to look at the cast, see if we know anybody. Not really. Okay. <laughs> Michael Douglas is the biggest name. Uh, playing his son is the, grandson. Is the kid from uh, Quiet Place. Oh, grandson. Yeah, grandson. Yep. Uh, uh, and uh, this is uh, based on a book called uh, called uh, A Great Improvisation, Franklin, France, and the Birth of America. Oh, cool. Um, Kind of Kindness. It looks interesting. It's, um, sorry, I'm not going to pronounce this name. The guy who directed uh, the Poor Things. Yeah, Poor Things. And I, the, the name of the movie starts with an F. But the cast is, like, insanely stacked. Yeah. It seems like it's a, it might be an anthology. It seems like it. Like, following a bunch of different, it's kind of like a uh, crazy stupid love kind of thing where you follow a bunch of character stories yeah. that quite that possibly inter intersect at a certain point or maybe certain ones inter intersect with each other the uh, which ironically enough also had Emma Stone in it yep poor things yeah but uh I still want to, I still haven't seen that. I want well, to see it. I was it. talking about, uh, Crazy Stupid Love. Oh, Crazy yeah. Stupid Love, yeah, true. But, uh, that's what started her, um, reoccurring on-screen romance with Ryan Gosling. Yeah, I mean, they have but, uh, insane chemistry together. A, uh, and according to Wikipedia, the, the premise is, uh, Kinds of Kindness is a triptych fable, uh, T-R-I-P-T-Y-C-H. Yeah, I don't know that word. I, I don't either. Fable with segments following a man without choice who tries to take control of his life. A policeman is alarmed that his wife, who was missing at sea, has returned, seems to be a different person, and a woman who is determined to find a specific someone destined to become a progenist spiritual leader. Huh. Interesting. Yeah. But, uh, not really much to go on. It was just a teaser. Yep. But still very interesting. And like I said, that cast already has me interested. Mm hmm Uh, so what, what, what was the Hulu one called again? Uh, Under the Bridge. Under the Bridge. I'm immediately interested because Hulu usually knocks it out of the park with these based on a true story, uh, type miniseries. Yeah. Um, you know, and it's done by the same uh, person behind Little Fires Everywhere, which I really enjoyed. Yeah. It's, uh... Based on a book by Rebecca Godfrey, mm. uh, who was a journalist and novelist and nonfiction writer. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and it tells the story of the murder of Rena Vert. Yep. It, it's yeah. I, I've he I've heard of the book. Never read it myself, but I've heard of it. Huh. It's a it's a Canadian uh, murder. Oh. And it's about a 14 year old girl who was beaten and killed. Uh, I won't say anymore because you know real life spoils show. But anyway. Yeah. Yep. Uh, this looks interesting. Um, it's got a Riley Keel in it. Uh, she was in The Good Doctor. Who did you play in The Good Doctor? Uh, oh, sorry. Movie Good, The Good Doctor. Oh, never mind. Uh, but she was also in uh, Magic Mike and uh, Fury Road. Oh, cool. Uh, just 
one of those familiar face ladies. Oh, if you ever saw um Logan Lucky. Oh, that's, that's the one with uh, Adam Driver. Yeah, yeah, Jane yeah. Uh huh. She was the main woman in that. Oh, okay. Yeah, that was what that that was the Adam Driver almost uh, Ricky Bobby type movie. Yeah, I saw that. But heist. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it also has a uh, award nominee and winner Lily Gladstone. Oh, good for nice, good for her. Yeah, she played. Uh, she, yeah, she. Uh, I I saw her. She's the cop, right? Oh no. But also, uh, well, I mean, I, I I just saw from the trailer. I'm pretty sure that's her. If not, I apologize. Also, uh, Izzy G is in it. Don't recognize that name. Uh, AJ and the Queen. Be positive. Anyway, younger actress. Uh, but anyway, looks interesting. We'll give it a shot. Yeah, for sure. Uh, was that it? No. Uh, it, we forgot the first one. Unfrosted. Oh, right, right. That looks fun. That looks real fun. It 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 gives me like the same vibe as that like uh cheeto show that was on disney plus the flaming hot cheetos one but mm -hmm. you know no offense it, it it looks more entertaining maybe just because of the cast that's involved also well, I, I like pop parts more than i like flaming hot cheetos also uh it'll be interesting to see because i don't know if he's directed before jerry seinfeld yeah as a director yeah i'm definitely curious i want to check that like one out it looks fun like you said stacked cat seems like it's going to be more of a loosely based on the story oh yeah no definitely it has a lot more exaggeration added to it which i think will make it more fun mm -hmm. amy schumer as like well you know who amy schumer reminded me of in the trailer who homegirl from uh good burger 2 oh yeah the the villain lady from uh good burger 2 yeah the home yeah, yeah homeboy from uh mondo burger's sister yeah yep yeah but that'll be fun oh yeah i think it'll be yeah i think it'll be a nice light like especially if it comes out around the time where we do a lot of heavy stuff it'll be a good palate cleanser oh yeah so yeah uh that's pretty much it for the trailer uh and now we get to bring back a segment that we haven't gotten to do in a while uh thanks to you lovely folks over in the youtube community and that is comment corner where we get to look over you guys comments and uh sh both shout you guys out and uh respond to you live on pod so brian let's hear those comments all right so we've got two one from uh hackless maybe i'm saying that name right i don't know but uh they've been sub to us for four years so thank you appreciate it uh they commented on our percy jackson episode said uh as a book reader i I can say I like many of the changes so far. Oh yeah, same. I I, I can I can I can definitely agree with that. Um, and you know, Brian, mm -hmm. you read the first book. Would you would, would you say uh, you liked uh, some? Oh yeah, a lot of the changes. In, indeed, like um, it did make quite a few changes, but unlike the movie, the changes were still in like the spirit of the franchise. And, yeah, uh, and I think most of the changes were. Sense. I think most of the changes were made more for a streamlining sense. Yeah, because like you uh like. The thing that a lot of people don't realize with adaptation is, you know, different mediums have different, like, areas of leeway, right? Because, like, in a novel, you get to see, like, a character's, like, inner monologue, and there's a lot more breathing room for these, like, quiet moments. But, you know, with a TV show, you got to keep your casual audience interested, because really, as much as, like, the hardcore, like, reader base is going to come and check it out, the casual audience is what's going to make or break a show. Uh, mm -hmm. So you, you have to keep things, like, you know, moving at a good clip so of course they had to focus a little bit more on the action just to get the just to get people's foot in the door but yeah you know uh it, it didn't really bother me as much uh as also, the movie mm -hmm. other changes were done for uh budget wise yeah and also to uh because remember Royden had a deep hand in this so sometimes it was to correct one or two things that uh he might have gotten wrong in his book like uh where the arch is located yep so yeah good, good stuff yeah. appreciate the comment thank Thank you very much. All right. So, uh, the second one is from, uh, I guess you could say friend of the channel. Definitely friend of the channel. Boy, boy Marion. Yeah. Good, uh, good to see you in the comments again, Marion. Uh, it was on our has been hotel episode. Mm -hmm. Bit of a long one. So hang in with me, but, uh, said, Hey man, it's been a while and I don't know if you'll see this. We do. We always check comments, Perry. But, but one thing that I think might happen with loot is that all of heaven is going to find Charlie and the hotel 
child innocent in Adam's death and will choose to support them. And Lilith is going to turn on loot and to add insult to injury, the exorcist angels are disbanded and this drives loot insane and she winds up becoming a villain that's even worse than Adam and she recruits former exorcist angels and angels that were loyal to Adam who feel that their way of life is completely destroyed to revenge on both heaven and hell. So I don't think the first, I think the first part is a bit of a jump, but I definitely mm -hmm. feel like there's going to be a schism because I think, uh, I, I definitely think that like, what is the name of the younger one that was like, that was on, um, oh, yeah. that was on Charlie's side? Emily. Emily. There we go. Yeah. I definitely feel like Emily and a lot of the people in heaven that were starting to question things when, uh, the extermination were revealed will, will believe that the hotel and hotel staff are innocent, but given how set in their ways heaven has been clearly shown to be, I think a majority of heaven will still agree with Luke, at least in the beginning. Mm, yeah, because I could see Luke being a villain, but like season three villain. Yeah, she's a late, I, I definitely feel like she's a late, they have to build up to her, especially because it's been confirmed officially that the V's are going to be the main villain for season two. Yeah. Because I, because my personal theory, I think what's going to happen, because we already know the V's plan on playing both sides. I think the V's will start to form an alliance with loot. And then once the V's are taken down, quite possibly by, uh, with the assistance of Lilith, because I still think Lilith will come through and act, actually be a good guy. Because I feel like it's kind of too obvious for her to be the bad guy. And as, especially now that Lucifer is more back on track and he's got like that, mm -hmm. you know, that fire back in him. I don't think uh like Lilith has a real reason to side against them once she finds out that Lucifer's you know back to his yeah. old self. I think I think she's more along the lines gonna be like Lucifer in the fact that uh, heavily flawed but not villain per se. Yeah, exactly. Do you have anything you would like to add, Tony? No, everything. Uh, I'm fine with what y'all were talking about. Okay, cool. Just wanted to make sure. All right, well, yeah. Thank you for your comment, Marion. Always appreciate it. And yes, we do read all the comments. So if you ever do comment on anything else we will see it and we'll bring mm -hmm. it up on this segment this isn't a recurring segment because we don't always get comments so you know and uh the uh percy one is a little bit older but that's just because it's been a while since we recorded yeah yeah so apologies on that one but yeah and if by chance you've commented between us recording this and posting this give us some leeway there's gonna be some heavy yeah we we we, we had some tactical issues in terms of recording so like you know that that experience explain the, the big time gap you know we're not slacking we are still recording things we have a pretty decent backlog it's just we we, we can't put the uh, we've been having troubles putting these out in a more timely fashion so our apologies i take responsibility for that one but yeah, yeah so uh that was comment corner now it's time to jump into the official discussion of lisa frankenstein oh oh boy so you know like i alluded to earlier this is another one where it's just like yeah i don't know what the critics are talking about this shit was great mm -hmm. i enjoyed the hell out of it it's super fucking weird uh but like in the best way possible and yes it very much feels like a like burton esque but you know as i said when, when i was watching it with the guys like you know zelda's a first time director of course she's gonna wear her influence on her sleeve and there's nothing wrong with that either no because to me it didn't feel like this is gonna sound weird but to me it didn't feel like it was burton inspired it felt like it was inspired by the things that inspire burton no i get what you mean i get what you mean and i think i think the really cool elements about it at least for me and uh you know possibly for tony as well i don't want to speak for tony but like you know the two of us are big fans of gothic horror and gothic literature and a lot mm -hmm. and you know as much as like burton gets credit for like using those elements in his films and rightfully so this very much like does a much more direct job and like if anything the influences are less Tim Burton and more so, you know, rightfully so, given the title and subject of the movie, uh, Mary Shelley. Yeah. And, uh, you and, know, uh, you see a lot of that in there, which is what I liked about it. Literature even, plays uh, a big part of, uh, specific name call out. Yeah. Specific name call out, uh, you know, uh, certain jokes and uh, a little bit at the end that we'll talk about, uh, 
in the spoiler yeah. section. But also, there were nods to classic literature, but there were also nods to classic films in general. Also, also something that I, you know, that I realized when watching it, but didn't really talk about when we were watching it. Uh, Lisa's fashion choices were very, very similar to. It's like it was like a modern, in terms of the eighty cents, take on classic Victorian Gothic fashion. Indeed, yeah. and uh, they're also with the movie stuff that I was talking about. There's callback to the first ever movie. Yep, ever. the first ever silent film. Yeah, this, so that yeah, there are references just to classic film in general. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, and like Zelda growing up in the house, uh, you know, with a you know famous TV and movie star. You know, I'm, I'm sure I'm sure she like you know she, she and her dad nerded out about a lot of this stuff. Mm -hmm. And since we're talking about her, oh my god, yeah, the cinematography. <laughs> Seriously, a lot of the choices were really really cool, especially a lot of the dream sequences and drug trips oh especially the drug trip the first drug trip that happens uh early on uh like at the party scene wild mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um other stuff i want to give shout outs to uh so if you guys know the premise uh lisa is a weirdo of like a weirdo outcast girl um in in the small town and she has a particular fascination with this one uh like dead young man um and said young man gets reanimated and uh like they get into shenanigans together uh one thing i want to give a big shout out to is the the effects and costuming department for uh oh, yeah. in terms of with cole fantastic and also shout out to cole for like this really shows the range of his acting because for a good oh, majority yeah. of the movie he doesn't even really speak it's a lot of physicality <sighs> Yeah, he sounded like Tony in the beginning of the podcast. Ha! Huh. Yep. Cute. Thank you. I try to be. <laughs> but yeah, um, so big shout out to him. It, it really shows how, like, how good of an actor he is, where, like, he really only needs, like, grunts and physical movement to convey emotion. Oh, yeah. And it's a lot it's of emotion. Hard for an actor to mm -hmm. go only, like, or mostly physical. Um, especially like with I all, said. especially with all the prosthetics that he had, I'm sure it was even more difficult to, like, emote as much as he could, uh, would have wanted oh, to yeah. but yeah go ahead brian you were but saying i was just saying that part of the reason why i liked uh, a horror film last year called uh i think it's called uh no one will save you mm -hmm. it was a hulu exclusive Mm -hmm. um, and part of the reason why I liked it so much was down to the main actress because in a different hands that that movie might not have been as good because you need a lot just to act through your actions mm -hmm. like Cole did, which also all the like stubbly yep. and shit. A lot of good physical comedy like, with that as well, yeah. And his facial expressions. Yep. Also, just a slight comment. Uh, one of the first things that we all said when we started this movie, it was so weird seeing being uh detective pikachu girl i can't remember her name off the top of my head right now kathleen newton oh Catherine newton there you go Catherine newton. newton it was so weird seeing Catherine newton not as a blonde but that it was really throwing me off at first mm -hmm. uh but it, it was great um really mm -hmm. yeah it's just a thing that actors tend to do yeah it was it, it was uh it was just kind of, it was just kind of funny because i think i i do think this is the first time i've seen her in anything where she wasn't blonde um Maybe. i think i'm I'm pretty sure but uh the uh, the other thing that i like about this that we alluded to is uh, a lot of the uh tropes of versions that we had because uh you know lisa herself is a part of a blended family so yeah in a lot of these situations you have like the evil stepmother evil stepdaughter now her stepmom is a total bitch mind you damn it janet why do you have to be so terrible yeah which i i feel like they might have done that on purpose oh it's more than a might it's more than a might rocky horror she actually says damn it janet Janet yep. Film. Yep. So yeah. Which nice little. Uh, it was Rocky Horror, right? Yeah, it was definitely. Yeah, it was Rocky Horror because uh because Janet. Yeah, Janet is the female lead. Which this definitely has a bit of a Rocky Horror it, vibe to it. It definitely does. Like I feel like it won't. I don't think it'll like rise to the level of cult classic that Rocky Horror has, but it has very cult classic vibes. It seems like a lot of Diablo Cody horror films like end up reaching cult classic status. Like Jennifer oh, yeah. Jennifer's body 
Body is definitely a like a late aughts, early 2010s uh, cult classic. Oh yeah. Uh, but yeah, no. Uh, so she might be a total bitch, but her stepsister Taffy, Taffy is the best. We we love Taffy. Oh yeah. Yeah. Like Miss Laffy. Yeah. No, she she was she she was very like you know understanding and super sweet. And yeah, you know she was she was just she was still a little stereotypical airhead sleazy cheerleader, but we loved her and for it. A little flawed, but yeah, that makes so well rounded. Mm. Yeah, she was she wasn't perfect, but she was still very nice and genuine, right? Like, uh, which which makes a scene in the movie later on, like honestly very sweet. Uh, but we'll talk we'll talk about that later. Uh, anything else you guys want to talk about in the spoiler free section before we jump to spoilers? A lot of the plot elements in uh, this film are interesting to say the least. Oh yeah. Keep it. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Well, no. It's a uh, to me. Uh huh. I see it as a neat little homage in its own right to uh, the 30s and 40s horror films, specifically of the Universal variety. Oh yeah. It feels. And it feels very similar. Uh huh. Go ahead. It's a modern take on that kind of uh, film style because of how a lot of the camera work and a lot of the. Oh yeah. It feels. It feels, it feels very um, akin to the, like the the 40s 50s like horror camp like a lot of the universal monster sequels yes that well a lot of those sequels came out in the like the late 40s yeah because yeah. in, in the 50s that was the uh b movie oh yeah uh, yeah yeah more, yeah, more, more sci-fi b movie yeah so yeah a lot of the 40s like universal monster sequels indeed it definitely felt like and, that i agree with you there and also just a shout out to uh the actors who played Janet, Carla Gutierrez. Oh yeah, that's right. Who is honestly becoming like a reoccurring character actor on the podcast? Seriously, and honestly, she was she was great in this. She she did kind of remind me a little bit of her character in Fall of the House of Usher because she did come off a little little bitchy towards some of the children. Yeah, but um, but yeah, so yeah, just a just a fun little coincidence that she popped up again. Uh, also, uh, the dad from Stranger things just kind of playing, playing your again your basic well, well-meaning well 80s, 80s dad yeah and I, and I and i love his like just kind of nonchalant attitude it's like okay i i guess that's a thing and like the ongoing joke about like the obsession with uh freaking that that one song <laughs> that, mm. that just constantly comes back you know you know what i'm talking about when it, when the, uh, when they start, when the whole piano thing starts happening oh yeah yep uh just fun fun stuff fun stuff so yeah, let's go ahead and jump into the spoiler section of this uh, review so that we can talk about all the like fucking buck wild shit that happens in this movie because yeah. Jesus Christ. Okay, so your usual countdown, foe. Five, four, three, two, one. Spoiler alert. <laughs> spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. Leave now all ye who enter here, lest y'all be spoiled. All right, so holy shit. This, this plot went from zero to a hundred real fast. Because mm -hmm. Like you know, we knew from the trailer that she'd be like murdering people to give him parts and stuff like that. So like that was surprising. But like, but like she was way too quick to a accepting the zombie and, and two like she was really into the murder. The yeah, she was really into the murder. Like way too much into it. The, like, uh, oh, so killing people and sewing their body parts onto you helps you? All right, bet I know who we can go for. <laughs> Look, so. Uh, to be fair, to be fair, the first uh, kill of the film yeah was co was completely accidental or more of like a heat mm -hmm. of the moment type thing. Yep, yep. because homeboy decided to protect thy lady's honor, crack the head. Oh, uh, damn it, uh, Janet. Yep. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. yeah. And then and that, yeah, and then the, the, the second one was premeditated, but honestly yeah. deserved. Mm -hmm. Fuck you, Doug. Ruining. Take advantage of a girl who's obviously. She was. Tri she was beyond. She, she was beyond tripping balls, bro. <laughs> like, yeah. She was. She was. She was out here seeing all kinds of shit. Pictures were moving and everything. It was wild. Uh, but yeah, fuck you, Doug. Giving short kings a bad name. Yeah. Like she was literally doing the, the thing that you should do, which is uh grounding yourself. Yep. And chilling out. Yep. And he's like, hey, let me take this time to take advantage of you. Yep. Why don't you go take a rest and also possibly touch? Uh, give me a hand job 
No. Lisa no, have Doug. A girl. I mean, nope. come on, Doug. Her last name is Swallows. I'm sure she wouldn't just do a hand job if she actually liked you. Yep. And also, Doug, if that was your jack off hand, I apologize, but you don't deserve your jack off. Exactly. Hand. Sorry, not sorry. Sorry, not sorry for what? <laughs> <laughs> Don't lose your hand. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> but yeah. uh, and then that like professional axe throw throw. Right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was that crazy. Was I do feel bad oh, I do feel bad for the random cop though. Yeah. That was, the random cop lady. <laughs> that was just the wrong place, wrong time. Yeah. She just got she did I don't think she died. Are you I sure? Think she was, yeah. She was just tossed in there. Cause I I heard I heard a very I heard I could have sworn I heard a crack. I thought she like broke her yeah. neck on the floor. All down. No, because he bear carried her. So it's like okay. he had underneath her and then just plopped her in the hole. Okay, all right. So cop lady possibly survived. Okay, well I'll take that. So I am under because because graves are dug pretty deep, but you could still get out of them if the hole is open. Yeah. So I think she's well. To my estimation, she's fine. She ain't dead. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it could. It, it, nice. And I mean, it could probably it probably explains how they were get how they got onto Lisa so fast because you know they left somebody alive. Yep. True. Also, uh, Taffy. Well, yeah. Also um, Taffy, but I I think. Uh, but also, I think they were already on to her before Taffy went to the cop. Yep, and yeah. also that, like, I, like I'm trying to say here, there are only three confirmed kills in this movie. Mm -hmm. Only three. Yep. Janet, Doug, and Motorcycle Asshat. Yep. Who, although, although... No, no, that man lost his dong. Oh, yeah. And... <laughs> he he still died. Yeah, he died, lost his dong from yeah. Bubba. So I that's the only thing to say. And the old man... The old man, I think. You know, yeah, I was, I was just about to say. I'm pretty sure the old man died because there was blood on that club. Yeah. yeah. So it's either four it's... confirmed, maybe more, because at the end it no. shows. All right. No, at the end we know for a fact that Lisa died. Mm -hmm. So that's enough. Yep. Because the tanning bed oh, was yeah. the only fire. Yep. 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 So, uh, but she looked like she had bandage marks on her. So. <laughs> burned in the tanning bed yep i know so tactics so, so yeah lisa counts as a kill i would count lisa as a kill yeah she got re five. yep yeah yeah but it's like four nebulous five because i still think that even though you can beat someone with a club that could spout at least a little bit of blood doesn't mean that they technically would die unless you would get them to the hospital safely yeah so yeah. This man's iffy yeah yeah so, so yeah so old man old old man is a question mark but we at least have four confirmed kills yep. but yeah but, uh, so so i want to go back and talk about michael real quick i think that was hilarious because as we were watching it me and tony made the joke about doug getting his before doug died we made the joke about doug getting his dick cut off mm -hmm. for what he tried to do to lisa and yeah, then we also made the joke of uh does his dick still work yeah do, yeah does it yeah do, yeah yeah does does cole's dick still work and also we uh we made that we uh brian like offhandedly like made the prediction slash guess of uh is taffy fucking with michael which good on you brian called that you called well, that one pretty early the thing that cute i told you this off camera but the main thing that cued me up about it is the fact that uh is the fact that uh when she got the hickey and made the excuse to dad and then they walked off and she was continuing the lie mm -hmm. i feel like they had a good enough in relationship that, that, where yeah where she would have told she would have just told her straight out out. yeah that it's a hickey chill yeah Don't get me in trouble with dad yeah but she didn't mm -hmm. so it's like why is she trying to hide it from her sister unless it's somebody that she liked yeah yeah makes sense mm -hmm. but but then and the fact that he called her like what kiddo yeah kiddo which like that was that was weird i was like wait why are you calling her kiddo like you're supposed to be in like the same fucking grade right yeah you guys share a class you're in the same grade why call her kiddo is, is it because she's flat it's because i'm pretty sure it's because she's flat i think it's also because he's trying to uh i think that was also his attempt at letting her down gently uh, trying to and that's failing. why that's why i said attempt yeah, but then, but then immediately, homeboy comes in it's like, yo, he came in mad, fuck wild, chopped his dick off. Hey, bro, bro, I, I mean, you guys heard, but like, I'm in fucking yeah. love. 
Well, I mean, we all make fucking love it when we saw the shadow of the dick just flying. And then land perfectly in the trash. Oh my god. No. Oh. And, and, like... and, and then it led to like the most wild thing. So another another peek behind the curtain of while we were like our personal experience of watching the movie, folks. At first we were like, all right, this feels a little weird. I don't know if I want them to get together by the end. I kind of think that them saying platonic would be cool. But then after the dick chopper girl, it's like, you know what? Mm, maybe this will work. And then it leads to this, uh, you know, because at least this whole thing, the whole reason she was at homie's house in the first place was because like she's like okay clearly the cops are going to be on to us soon i don't want to die a virgin before i get arrested so i'm going to throw myself at him and get boned which um i just realized something uh-huh technically she still got boned by the same dick oh yeah. god damn it brian <laughs> So, but, so she vicariously still, you know, got what she wanted. But not the way that she intended. Yeah, but yeah. But yeah, it's just like, you think that this is going to go the typical, oh, I've created a monster, I need to put it down. Yeah, that's, yeah, th yeah, because I was like, okay, it's a, it's, it's a Frankenstein almost. Clearly she's going to have to kill her, or her, either her creation is going to kill her, or she's going to have to kill, the, or it's going to subvert it, and she's going to have to kill, she's going to have to actually kill her creation. Uh, but no, <laughs> It instant. Yep, she fucked her creation, and then technically it goes full circle Frankenstein, where he has to willingly kill his creator. Yeah, but th this movie was wild, and I had a <laughs> feeling that it was gonna go like that. I mean, she couldn't fight after this feeling the, uh, anymore. But I had a feeling that it would go like in that similar vein after we saw the massager scene. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, which I thought was hilarious because, like, at first she. Brings out the, she brings out the Hitachi one. Well, he brings it out like, what is this? Yeah, yeah. And, you know, us being like, you know, us being modern adult men, we're like, that's a Hitachi one. That's a vibrator. She plays it all very innocently, and she's like, yeah, it's a back massager. And so at first, from, from my from Aunt my... Shelly. Good for you, Aunt Shelly. Nice call. She's, that nice reference, by the way. It might make me less of a bitch. Yeah. <laughs> Which, <laughs> Tony's comment to that was hilarious. He goes, well, damn, Aunt Shelly. Are you just trying to tell me I need to get fucked? <laughs> Apparently, uh, yeah. Or she, or alternatively, she was telling you to go fuck herself. Also I mean, true. Also true. Same intention, basically. Mm -hmm. Oh man, that that's actually a hilarious troll gift to give to somebody you don't like. So if it's a dude, you give them a flashlight. If it's a chick, you give them a vibrator, and you oh, yeah. and you attach a card to it that says "Go fuck yourself." Oh my god. Which, speaking of oh my god, that scene where she actually asks oh, Cole yeah. to use it on her. Oh, oh yeah, that was hilarious. Cause she's like, and you know, she's like, you know, that simultaneously there's a lightning strike and then she just says, oh my god. But while that's going on and we hear the oh my god, it's in the middle of the father and the stepsister having this dramatic moment. Yeah, about the, about, about the mom worrying about her possible death. Uh, and then you just hear, oh my god, in the back. <laughs> yeah, the dad looks up. The dad looks up. Just is like, you know what? I don't want to know. <laughs> Yeah, that was hilarious. Very well timed. And I, I, I love the I love the speech pattern of Lisa in general. Like the speech pattern that Catherine uses. It seems very it's it's very airheady and nonchalant. She's like, Yeah, you know, sometimes people don't just use it on their back, they use it on other places. Oh, oh yeah. I could try it if you want. Oh god. Uh, that was hilarious. Which, which you know, her speech pattern kind of reminds me of like what would happen if you mixed Daria and her sister. Yeah! Also- well, I am a real life Harrison to one of my siblings. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, but, uh-huh. That must have been awkward. Right. No, it's hilarious because hair, big and poofy. Yep. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, uh, Lord. Yep. That, 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 that actually, that actually reminds me, this is a good transition into the next segment. The, the fits in this, in this movie. Solid. Oh, my God. Real good shit, especially when, uh, like, Lisa starts to like repurpose a lot of uh Taffy's clothes. Which by the way, don't really see Taffy with like those darker colors. Yeah. It drinks mode. Yep. Which by the way, oh my god, that one line about the first dress where yeah, Taffy gave that to me because
but she said that she looked too good in that. Yep, she was getting too many compliments. I want to see Taffy in that dress, <laughs> damn it. <laughs> but I do gotta admit that she rocked that, like, goth Molly Ringwald. Look. Yeah, I especially like the, like, the black dress with the fish nets. That was a, that was a, that was a really good, like, the first one with the hat. I was like, okay. Yeah. And then, uh, our titular, uh, Frankenstein's monster in this film with his little, uh, fit montage. Oh, the 80s dress up montage. My favorite, oh, my favorite yeah. one was send it back. Yep. Mm -hmm. Uh, good also shit. Also, the, the pink robe. Oh, God, that was funny. I thought that was perfect. It's perfect. I love it. No. Yep, good shit. But but also, I got to give credit. I don't know if it's on purpose or not, because walking through all those prosthetics has to be hard. But, like, the fact that he stumbled and fell into the closet a couple times. Oh, yeah, that was great. Um, But back to Taffy and Lisa. Uh, I love the moment where, like, after Michael gets his dong chopped... <laughs> And they're sitting in the car and, you know, Taffy is understandably so extremely traumatized. And, Very traumatized. And she saw, yeah. her, she saw her sister basically assist in the castration of the guy she was fucking. Mm -hmm. And she's like, oh god, my sister's a psycho. Un again, understandably so. And she's probably correct. Um, she's, you know, sitting there trembling while Lisa's pouring her heart out. Like, you know, giving mm -hmm. this real speech about how, like, thank you for being such a real sister to me. You know. Everybody else looked through me. I, I I wrote you off because you you know you dressed and uh, and looked like everybody that bullied me, but you actually really did care about me. You treated me like a real sister, and that's part of your family. And I really do see you as my family. I love you. And this just really really sweet gesture of her giving her mom's rosary to Taffy. But meanwhile, Taffy just has that like yeah. straight face, traumatized, and, wide eyed. And yeah, and, and yeah, and, and then she. Like obviously she backs she backs away a little in terror when Lisa tries to put the rosary on her. But I do love that like post Lisa's death she is still wearing the rosary. So clearly yeah. clearly the speech got through to her. Yeah. So also, I um, I love that. Mm -hmm. The moment the moment before that with uh Michael was his name right? Yep. Where where she where Lisa was realizing and she's like oh my god you don't really care about all of this like film cred and all of that you just care that you can wave it above somebody yeah that you, you want to be the you want to be the cool guy and the smart one in your relationship you don't want your girlfriend to be on the same level as you and he doesn't deny it he doesn't deny it but and, and to lisa's credit at first she tries to stop our monster friend from lorena bobbiting homeboy mm -hmm. and she does fully stop him from going after taffy yeah because taffy taffy almost died there and i think that's what made mm -hmm. Taffy after the initial shock of, of watching her boyfriend's dong get chopped off and fly through the air. I, th I think, like, her realizing, wait, she saved my life, is why she still, you know, has a lot of love for Lisa. Mm -hmm. Um, so, uh, this brings us to the end. I love the ending, where it shows that, uh, our monster boy, you know, took Lisa's body and essentially reanimated her eventually, and they're living happily ever after, and whose poetry is our man reading? Why, none other than Sir Percy Shelley. Mm -hmm. Love mm -hmm. that. Perfect way yeah. to end movie uh i which by the way uh-huh it's also a perfect little uh cap to the movie that that's the only time that cole speaks yep yeah and and in my head canon i i think what it is and i like i don't know if there's somewhere that confirms this or not but i think what it is is since they're both like reanimated corpses it's not that cole is actually speaking it's the fact that since they're both reanimated corpses they can now fully understand each other oh huh that's my personal head canon maybe for me, I just thought, sorry. Uh, here's something that I want to uh, get across because Brian pointed it out after we saw the movie. Okay. That it could, it does take place in the same world as Jennifer's body. Oh yeah. In a time before Jennifer's body. Mm -hmm. In the eighties. So follow me here. All right. It's not necessarily that they can understand each other because they're both reanimated corpses. What if due to the amount, because the tanning bed played a huge role in the reanimating process. Yeah. 
you know, fresh new uh, court part bent tanning bed to yep. add on to uh, the power. Yeah, of yeah, the... yeah, yeah. To firmly, to firmly attach the parts. Yep. So I think they went through the same formula of getting him boosted up to sentience and able to speak to make him more human. Oh, okay. So you think maybe yeah. you think maybe they just traveled around, like instead of just staying in one time, maybe they just traveled around and got different parts so they didn't get caught. Yep, and go to different tanning beds. And I mean, he does okay. know how to drive. Mm -hmm. Yep. And also, when you look and he's reading it, mm -hmm. like it's not just that he's speaking; he's also like the most human. Yeah. Human yeah. He's got all the color. Yeah. He's got all the color to his skin and everything. Yeah. He actually kind of the way that he looked. He looks like he Jughead. All of his color. Yeah. The way that he looked very seriously with the mutton chops and everything reminded me of Sweeney Todd. He did. Yeah. Also, uh, just a just small fun fact that we all pointed out. I love that he grew mutton chops in the tanning bed. No, or did he have them prior and they were just more revealed when after he got tanned the first time? That was his time, Jay. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Makes sense. Yeah, just you didn't really notice because he had, like, oh, yeah, a he... bloated face. And, and, all, and, uh... all the, and all the swamp goo and stuff, yeah. Yeah. Yep. And then as he becomes more and more rejuvenated, the mutton chops begin to appear more and more prominent. More pro okay, that, yeah, that makes sense. Okay, yeah. cool. <laughs> yep. Friends, I noticed the weirdest details before the rest the guys do fair and they look like i'm a crazy person fair all right well I mean, that that's pretty much oh yeah go ahead tony i bet also another thing just a peek behind the curtain for everyone one of my greatest bits of comedy was was said while we were watching the film as a joke to our uh to our monster here i did everything for the girl who resurrected me and she still said no <laughs> yeah right <laughs> i i came back i came back all the way back from the dead and i still got rejected yep oh uh, yeah. that was some funny shit uh anyways so the i guess now that brings us to final thoughts and ratings uh i'll start us off i give this a solid 8.5 uh no you, you know what no fuck it nine i give this a nine i really enjoyed this movie i don't think it's a 10 out of 10 but it's really good like i would totally recommend this to anybody that loves the weird horror comedy genre and it's just a lot of fun like it was fun jo it was fun joking around with it it was fun like figuring out all the different little references references stylistically it was great the music was dope i really can't find that much wrong with it so i'm giving it a nine all right moving on tony what about you final thoughts and rating this is a uh love letter to 1989 this is a love letter to gothic horror <laughs> this also is absurd creative sure it's maybe not the most original tale out there i mean some things aren't going to be that original but the way it was made was masterfully done. Yeah. Thank you, Miss Williams. Excellent directorial debut. You deserve a nine. I'm sure your dad. I'm sure your dad is very proud of you. This, mm -hmm. this is great work. Yeah. It it, it was. It, it was great. Uh, a lot of good references in there and stylistic choices that I really like. I can't wait to see what she does next. For me personally, I just feel like there was a, like it went a little too over the top at times, and so um, it's still great. Like great, but. It's not going to be a clean sweep this time. No problem. Mm -hmm. uh, unanimous, because I think for me personally, it's close. So I'll give it an 8.5. All right. Con tradition continues slightly in a way. Yeah. And it's very rare for Brian to be the... Uh... The lowest. Yeah, lowest in the bunch. It happens sometimes. Occasionally. Uh, I, mean, I think our first idiot. time that that happened... Uh, Sandman. Unless you were for, there for our Twitch days, you wouldn't know it. But it was Sandman. Yep, Sandman. Yeah, because Tony and I both... Gave it a uh, Sandman a ten, and I think you gave it a nine point five. Nine point five. Yep. Yep. Didn't we get kind of coerced him to bump it up a little bit more? <laughs> we did. We. It wasn't. It, it, it was one of those what? cases of where he had it at a nine, and after talking to us, he bumped it to a nine point five. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but also that like point five difference for y'all was the fact that y'all were big fans of the comics. So. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. 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 But still, here eight point five is. Oh yeah, it's good. nothing. It's nothing to sneeze at. Mm -hmm. Like 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 you said, you still thought it was a great film like yeah. it's it, it just more of like where me and tony were like oh yeah no no i i i, I uh where uh we were slightly more accept accepting of the over the top over the top absurdist humor you felt like it you felt like at times it was a little too much which is understandable mm -hmm. yeah yeah so yeah to yeah. totally recommend it you guys it's on peacock go check it out it's a fun time a very very fun time <laughs> went places that i did not expect I'm... well now you expect it if you're here now yeah 
Yeah. I'm definitely yeah. I'm definitely going to add this to the Halloween queue for this year. Uh when when I when I <laughs> I do our annual Halloween movie marathon in the Discord. Yeah, for when we need something uh like brighter. Yep. After watching <laughs> stuff like we're probably going to watch Malignant again. Yep, we're going to watch Malignant again. We're at Which holy crap. Uh, to <laughs> that was one that I wish that we were recording. Right. To uh, totally killer <laughs> is added to that one of course as well cuz totally killer is just it's fun. It's killer. Malignant has like one of the best like I don't even know if you can say it plot it, twist. It's a, it's, like it's more like genre a, twist. It's more like a genre swerve. Like it's it switches from unintentional horror comedy to fucking <laughs> horror action flick. <laughs> Yeah. Well, it's, a, it's a slasher flick that decides to take elements of fucking time travel shenaniganery movies. No, no, no. We're talking about uh, no. Malignant. We're talking about Malignant. Oh. Yeah. I thought talking about Totally Killer. No, no, no. Well, no. We did. Uh, we, 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 yeah, yeah, we went back to Malignant after mentioning Totally Killer. But yeah, because um, like, cause like uh, I don't think you were there when we watched it for the first time. Malignant starts off as this like kind of terrible. Well, I, yeah. I know you're behind it. Yeah. I haven't seen dude, dude, I'm like, we were all watching it for for old school homie hank with like the whole gang even yeah. darth was there yeah and uh i had i had seen the trailer so, so yeah yeah, so, so, yeah. But, yeah because it was brian it was brian's turn to choose the movie and, and you know brian was like we should check this one out <laughs> and at first the whole time we were clowning brian was like damn brian we're not gonna you're not allowed to choose movies anymore this is trash <laughs> And then, and then, like literally, the Tony body fell through the ceiling. <laughs> yep, the body fell through the ceiling in the room with all the main on, characters. Yep. Because then the comedy started to come <sighs> when the body hit the ceil it hit went through the floor. Yep. And it's like, oh yeah, all of our main characters are just happen to be there. Th this happens to be the very room where they're having a conversation about the the lack of evidence or a body. Look at that. There's a body. And then. And then the comedy goes on for a bit, and then we're like, "Okay, oh, shit." Maybe it's not that bad if we look at it like a horror comedy. And then our main character sister, I think it was her sister, yep, finds out about the big twist about the conjoined. Yeah, the conjoined twin, twin possession thing, and then it turns then into a fucking slaughter horror action fest with the scene in the police station. Mm -hmm. Where they actually, they actually got a contortionist instead of just your normal stunt person because she's killing all these motherfuckers, but she's doing it backwards. Yeah, she's doing it backwards, bending and twisting, doing all this fucking buck wild action. It's crazy. Definitely recommend watching Malignant. It's a good time. It's a mm. very slow start, but it's a good time overall. Uh, yeah. But that little side hand and aside, uh, we hope you guys enjoyed this episode of the Channel Traces podcast. Podcast. Uh, we definitely had a good time. But Brian, go ahead and tell the folks at home what our next episode is going to be. Well, we're heading from one, I guess you could say, troubled family to another. The Graysons. We're talking about Invincible. Yeah. Think, Mark. Think. I'm <laughs> excited as fuck. Because we didn't get to talk about the first season. So, super hyped to talk about season two. Looking forward mm. to it. Invincible is gonna be awesome. Especially because I know which material they cover for this season. Season, it's gonna be great. Mm -hmm. I'm super hyped about this episode. This is one where even if life gets in the way, I'm not calling it audible. We're talking about this, damn it. Okay. All right. But uh, we will see you guys then. But hope you uh, hope you enjoy the rest of your week and hope you enjoyed this episode of the Channel Test Podcast. And we will catch you guys next time. Peace.